Hello, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare and uh, Ciro uh, Agbaku. Okay, Abaku. He, he said I should stop putting in the G. It's Abaku, not Abaku. Actually, I would say Cyril Abaku. Yeah. There that, you go. That, that's how it's pronounced. Cyril Abaku. Yeah, exactly. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Good morning, my I'm, I'm glad to be here. Indeed. <laughs> now, now, Cyril, we were together the other day. I think mm -hmm. it was day before yesterday when we looked at the um, uh, election, the election in Bielsa mm -hmm. and the um, governorship election there had been nullified by the election petition tribunal yes and so it looks and not just nullifying it they had also said that fresh elections have to be conducted mm -hmm. i remember we we, we we got in touch with INEC and the yes, pro mr did. Kwe. Yeah. you know he he, he really explained it um, not that everybody really is on the same side of the mm -hmm. page when it comes to this whole matter mm -hmm. because the but, but the way he explained it mm -hmm. he said he was quite surprised that it had mm -hmm. come like that not everybody was surprised there are those Very who had said that, wait a minute, I hope you're not using logical common sense. Mm. Because this is not common sense. This is legal sense. They will be guided by the rules, by the regulations, by the laws, and all that kind of thing. So we said, okay, there's still some more meat on this bone. We're, we're, we're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to take <laughs> hold of it. But as you were very anxious to, or you're sort of insistent for the completeness of the story to yes. put out uh, last time. Yes. Which is to say that the governor has officially filed 12 grounds of appeal to challenge... No less. Yes, 12. Yes. To challenge the split decision yeah. of, the, of, of, of the tribunal to test the validity of the judgment and to see whether what came out that it was judgment or justice. So we, you know, we're looking forward to this. <laughs> Cyril, you are joining them. Whether it was judgment or justice. Or justice there is yeah. a difference between the two. Of course there is. Of there course you there go. is. Mm. So, and of course... I guess everybody, including the lawyers themselves, including mm -hmm. the judicial system itself, wants justice. That's mm -hmm. the whole purpose. Of course. It, it's, it's, yeah. You know, if the Supreme Court were not to be the court of last resort in Nigeria, there will always be meat on every bone for the, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> well, for, the, for the man of the law, because there will always be some technicality to exploit. But it has to stop somewhere. It's got to there stop somewhere. There has to be a last yeah. stop. Yeah. So right now, um, uh, the, the governor has, uh, in Bowser, has appealed to, no, sure he has. Uh, to the Supreme Court. Have no, 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 court of appeal. Uh, of court of appeal in the first yes, instance. Yes. And that's the last bus stop. For, no, it's not. Oh, they that's, can still yes, go. Yes, the court of first instance was the, was the tribunal. The court of appeal has appellate jurisdiction. They will appeal there. If the outcome didn't satisfy him, then he would still appeal to the Supreme Court. If he didn't satisfy the other party, I believe that they mm. would also want to see if they can get mm. back what they got at the tribunal initially mm. at the Supreme Court. So this is something that we, for, for certain, we are set for both the Court of Appeal, in my opinion, and the Supreme Court. Okay. Because whoever is not happy with what comes out at, at the Court of Appeal will, will definitely want to look at you know, um, what, comes, what could come out of the Supreme Court. So we've established that um, there still is some meat on this bone. And um, <laughs> plenty. And um, uh, we, that day we were pressed for time. And so yes, we're, we were. we're starting with it today mm -hmm. uh, so that maybe more people will be yeah. able to call in yeah. uh, than before. Let's just refresh people's memories with a, a package um, mm -hmm. on the tribunal's judgment. Placards of disappointment sum up the narrative of a people vexed by the judgment of the Bielsa Governorship Tribunal. It is a short walk expressing solidarity with Governor Doye Diri, who has already filed an appeal against the judgment. Prompt salaries. And we want to say that because of that, our parents are now smiling. And we want that smile to continue. And that we are saying no and we are condemning it. And we are saying that they should withdraw their case. We want Bayelsa State to be stable. Yes. We want peace in Bayelsa State. Yes. We are saying no because the, uh, the governor is doing very well. The market women are smiling, business is booming, salaries are being paid, all retirees are being paid. So we are standing with Doye Diri. We are standing with him to, to the end. We believe in his educational policies. We believe that Doye Diri has come to salvage the Nigerian students in Baeza State. And it's on that note, we are calling on the federal government, we are calling on President Mohamed Buhari that the students are saying no, no. to the tribunal judgment. And we are standing with our excellency Senator Doye Diri. The coalition of groups later converge on this hall where they give reasons for continuity of governance in Creek Haven, the seat of power. 
You can see joy and happiness everywhere in the local government, among the civil servants, in fact, traders, market women, youths, who want to beg those distractors that are bent on causing disharmony in this state, causing destruction in this state, to allow peace in this state. We are asking for peace, progress, and, and betterment of the non-indigenous and the indigenous in the state. Nobody should come to distract him. They should allow him to concentrate. And as we are saying it here, we're going to show it in every form that they will call upon. Non-indigenous are for Doyediri, our miracle governor. In the meantime, Governor Diri has called for calm, urging ministries, departments, and agencies of government to continue in the discharge of their duties as commissioner nominees await an official date for a swearing-in ceremony after getting a clean bill of health at the state assembly. Ovietime George, TVC News, Yenagoa. Okay, and um, to, to join us now, as I said, to take another look at the matter, since there are quite frankly divergent opinions on this whole matter. Um, this is where it's up to now. We are being joined by uh, my friend, Mr. Babatunde Ogala. Mr. Ogala is a lawyer and is the former APC National uh, Legal Advisor. However, we were really interested in, uh, in, in, in you today uh, because of the law that you are a lawyer. Good morning today, by the way. Okay. So, um, as I introduced you, um, you're a lawyer, and uh, I'm, I'm really interested, we are interested this morning in your legal opinion, but also being a member of APC, and seeing as APC was the first casualty of this particular decision, I guess you'd be taking more than a passing interest in, in goings on. Uh, Tunde, I, I believe your audio is muted. Could you just check your phone? Unmute it, please, if you will. Unmute your audio on the, on the phone. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. We have you, but I think your audio is accidentally muted. Okay. We'll, we'll get to you as Mr... Babatunde Ogala is uh, trying to sort that matter out. Uh, we shall take his legal opinion uh, on the matter uh, as it is. But as I was saying, mm -hmm. it was APC that was shown the door uh, as a result of the first uh, 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 issue uh, mm -hmm. that brought in Governor Deary. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now, if, if indeed this, the, the way the tribunal has pronounced stands, then actually it's, it's conceivable that ABC, APC will be presenting a candidate uh, along with other people, you know, and uh, they'll have another shot at it. But we, 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 we get ahead of ourselves. We haven't even gotten that far yet, yeah, yeah. right? Yes, we haven't. <laughs> you know, because I've had, like you rightly said, I've had divergent opinions. People, ex in fact, you know, this is time when lawyers will tell you that one little comma somewhere, one little semicolon somewhere. All somewhere. of these things everything, are yeah. Everything is being thrown at it. The reality is that um, we are in an era where the courts have taken up pronounced, they've taken up serious prominence, if, I'm, if you'd excuse me, that, that, mm. yeah, they, 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 they've taken up a certain level of prominence whereby when you win an election, you realize that you've not gotten to the end of the rope yet. When these matters are taken to court, the outcome could significantly be cataclysmic. And so... And this is well, a very undesirable situation. It it's is. like all commentators, including the law, lawyers themselves, um, they're not satisfied with... Because democracy can't be handed over to the, to the judiciary to determine. So democracy by judiciary? In fact, it is called judicialization. There you go. Where people look at the ballot and despise it mm. and say that whatever happens at the ballot... Imagine on Saturday, to quote what, what one of the lawyers said, he said that is it lawyers or politicians who are destroying Nigeria, that how can someone who scored eight in an election also go to court to go and contest because he believes that he could express some kind of technicality? Yes, 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 exactly. If you ask me, we should even say that if you didn't, you know when they say to test a certain number of states in the federation for you to become president or governor of your, of your 
of your state. Mm -hmm. There is a certain number you, you should score. You should not even be permitted to walk near a court court to come be contested. <laughs> because in the end, you waste the time. Look, look at now. The reality is this: you end up wasting the time of the court. This governor sent a list of uh, commissioner of ministers to the state of House Assembly the other day. That's oh, ostensibly that that could be put on hold now, pending when all of these things are cleared. How many political parties are going to go to court? How long will uh, will 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 the court keep saying election nullified? So if he has spent let's say half his time in office and the court says nullified and it's appealed at the Supreme Court, it means all those two years have passed. One day, a governor will be in office for ten years because. Parties will keep on going to court yeah. and if, it, you know, it, so it, we, it, it might be uh, unsatisfactory to, to, to some, especially analysts, but what's the alternative is the, uh, has always been the issue. We, we, we just have to have the rule of law. It, as you said, it can be time-wasting. People can take advantage of the law, uh, but there's no alternative. Or take disadvantage in the instance of this case. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because what happens is that I've, I've, I have always been an advocate of evolution, political evolution, in the sense that when, one, when, when a particular election cycle ends, we look at the mistakes we amend. We look at the mistakes we amend. But we are, sadly, we are not as, as, as fast as we should be. And so events should be ahead of us. We should be ahead of events. Not, there's nothing in what is happening in Bayelsa today. Anyways, yeah, yeah. We've, if, in fact, I think it was the governor of Ebony that said that for them, when they look at uh, seeking for seeking power, that is look, seeking for political office, they think of declaring for the, uh, for the position. They think of primaries. Mm -hmm. They think of the main election. Mm -hmm. They think of the tribunal, mm -hmm. the court of appeal, the supreme court. So whereas the on the undecided um, public or the electorate believes that with their voters can they go to get a governor elected, get in their minds or on their minds they they know for a, uh, for a fact that. Danek declaring you winner of the election is not the end of the road. Can, it, 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 it can be road. extended. In but fact, as, as Mr. Koye, you remember when we spoke with Mr. Koye on, on, on early, early this week, I believe it was a Monday Tuesday, or Tuesday. Tuesday, it Tuesday, was Tuesday. Tuesday yes. When we spoke with Mr. Koye, he had stated out um, his understanding and consequently um, INEC's understanding, I imagine. Yes, he isn't the legal advisor to INEC, but mm. um, he is the... Um, public relations person okay. and he spoke voter education uh, yes public relation mm -hmm. and and voter education mm -hmm. and um uh, you know when we asked him if he was surprised he said he was um mm -hmm. and, and then proceeded to tell us about um what was that technical term he used uh jury, there was the jurisdiction uh, ju jurisdictional uh something 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 uh long story short the way he had explained it was that um look INEC felt that the candidature uh of the party complaining the deputy can, the, the deputy the, governorship the, the, candidate, deputy yes. governorship candidate yes. of that party um, was defective yeah and so INEC was not going to register a defective person mm -hmm. he had even given us the extreme example for mm -hmm. clarity that so if a Filipino comes in here and wants he wasn't born in Nigeria he's not a Nigerian citizen he's not a Nigerian by birth you 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 think uh, so we we, we understood mm -hmm. it up mm -hmm. to that place but I've also heard other commentators say ah uh ah -uh, uh ah -uh, uh uh INEC should stay in its lane. That is not its lane. That is for the courts to pronounce that somebody is defective. And so we, I remember in the conversation we had said that, look, oh, uh, so from this line of reasoning, um, without prejudice to what the knowledgeable people are telling us, go ahead and register that which you call defective and um, let whoever... Uh, is a party to the whole matter come and complain. Then the courts, we'll make being the, the right authority will make the pronouncement that INEC went and made too early. So I, l let me see if Mr. Ogala is uh, back online. So, I, um, I, 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 sorry, if I, just me. So I'm imagining that I'm a party to the electoral process. Yes. When I go to court, I'm not a liar, but when I go to court, I will say that I will, INEC will be party to the suit for criminal negligence. Because in the first instance, they've taken someone whom they know. Mm -hmm had the potential to make a mockery mm -hmm. and make a mess of the entire process mm. eventually. Okay, that's you speaking now. Of course, me, you know, me speaking. So, are you not a lawyer? 
I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I hear. Because yeah, this is the logical way we were. Some, course, some, some people were considering it. Of course. But the lawyers are saying to us that there's more to it than that. And um, Mr. Babatunde Ogala would have been in a beautiful position to sort of clarify and explain. Uh, but for now, we're having a challenge, you know, contacting him. So what we'll do, what we're going to do is that um, we'll, we'll suspend this for a while, pending when we can get hold of Mr. Ogala. Let it not be that we ourselves are the people who are talking about this mm -hmm. whole matter. So we'll... <laughs> we'll We'll, we'll, I think we'll, perhaps we do have wait, wait, wait a minute. Just as I was about to go, I'm hearing that um, Mr. Gala is ready now. Okay. Uh, good morning, Tunde. Uh, good morning, Yori. Ah, beautiful. Uh, we now have Mr. Baba Tunde or Gala. Um, Mr. Gala is a lawyer, uh, as I said earlier, and uh, indeed former APC National Legal Advisor. Uh, he's joining us uh, remotely. And so I was saying before we could we establish this contact that it seems to me that because I mentioned your party and your party was a casualty of the originating uh, wahala, so that the candidate of APC uh, was you know shown the way out of office. I was saying that you'd have more than a passing interest in the state of affairs now. The theory being that should this stand, it should this stand then APC conceivably well, uh, would present another candidate. Well, um, we, we, we have just received uh, the copy of the judgment. And let me quickly say, I do not speak for APC. Sure. I was legal advisor. Sure. So I would, I'm not, I don't have the mandate to speak for APC. Mm -hmm. So I need to make this clear that I express a personal view as a legal practitioner. And first, let's go to what the judgment of the court was some two days ago. It was a split decision um, by the tribunal. So the effect, and that is the key thing we need to take away, that by the provisions of the law and undecided authorities, and I remember vividly the case of Action Congress uh, Nigeria versus INEC, where the court unequivocally said INEC has no powers to disqualify any candidate. By that, by the provisions of the Electoral Act, the body that is empowered to pronounce on disqualification of otherwise, he had the courts. And that is the key thing. Because I've heard the um, school of thought saying the action was statute bad, was not statute bad. Yeah. And I listened to the INEC commissioner on TV a few days ago, mm -hmm. where he was saying, okay, suppose they bring a Filipino or bring a 10-year-old child. If a party brings a 10-year-old child, the undecided authority and the law, it says, you have no powers. And that is why the act has provided that you publish the personal particulars okay. of all candidates on the notice board and let the public see and if need be, go to court where there is a first, um, they provide their false information. And even the electoral act has clearly provided one of the grounds for challenging the validity of an election is unlawful exclusion. And that was, in my opinion, what the court pronounced. Then there was the school of thought that when the, the cause of action, because I listened to the argument, I read the judgment, and I must say here that in that suit, neither I nor the other respondents called any witness. So the only witness on record was a witness of ANDP. Mm. That was the only, those were the only witnesses, um, one of whom was even an INEC staff. Okay. Um, so, so in my opinion, the election that was being challenged, because there was also the argument that the cause of action ought to have arisen with the election that, I mean, the election that was uh, the result that were declared in November. But the tribunal said that Afon declared Diri as winner with 161,000 or thereabout votes. That is the result that is now being declared. And on the authority of um, Matawali, that's the Zamfara case. The court was clear on that. Now you can challenge Matawali's declaration, irrespective of the fact that APC have previously 
won the election. Almost on all fours with mm -hmm. Bielsa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost on all fours. Well, you, you see, uh, uh, today this is probably something that um, non-legal people have to learn to wrap their mind around because it, yes. it seemed um, quite clear that when INEC, as the officiating uh, body, determined yes. that this guy did not comply with the regulations for, uh, to, 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 to stand as a candidate, um, yes. and you, 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 you heard it. In fact, it was on this station where you heard the INEC man use the example, the extreme example of a Filipino oh, or, a an, Filipino or an underage person. Um, so, yes. so the ordinary person who doesn't have the advantage, shall we say, of understanding legal thoughts and processes would say, why are you wasting everybody's time? This guy cannot satisfy the condition. So INEC has done the right thing to refuse to register him. Um, but you are but saying it's not as simple it. as that. Yeah, but you see, um, like I've said to you, in a plethora of authorities, the courts have said, if you grant such absolute powers, and that was especially uh, in um, the case of uh, ACN versus INEC, the court had said, if you grant such powers to a court, hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I can hear you today, but, you know, uh -huh. quickly, please round up. That if you grant such powers to a court, to the INEC, then it can become arbitrary. I see. So even if the field are non-qualified candidate, let other people. That is why there is also a provision in the Electoral Act empowering even members of the public to challenge your nomination if you make false declarations in court. Uh, okay. INEC has no powers to disqualify. Okay. Because INEC said he disqualified. So that is the bottom line, really. That, yes, that's that, the bottom line. That is a legalism that INEC does and not so have the, the power. And when the cause of action arose is a different cup of tea. But first and foremost, the law says INEC has no power to disqualify a candidate. All right, then. I want to thank you very or much. Or indeed anybody from an election. Thank you very much, Tunde. Um, uh, yeah. I wish we had more time, but we spent quite a lot, uh, a bit of time trying to yeah. get things straight. But thank you very much for making time to come on, Mr. Baba Tunde Ogara, right. a lawyer and former APC National Legal Advisor, who, as he emphasized at the top, was not speaking for the APC. It was his own opinion as a legal practitioner. Okay. Um, the other thing that we wanted to um, speak about this morning, we wanted to have a conversation on revenue generation and um you know we're just tapping mineral resources to the optimum so um i don't know whether we should take a break first or if we should just swing straight into it uh, maybe let, 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 you know what i think let's let's take a break so that we won't come back and you know too soon be going off on break we, we will come back and talk with this with um the honorable minister of state and his ideas on the subject matter stay with us please Okay, welcome back. And um, now let's look at efforts to um, optimize, as it were, um, resources for the country uh, from our mineral assets. And um, we have joining us remotely the Honorable Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, uh, who is also the chairman of the Ministerial Committee on the Optimization of Revenue from Mineral Resources, Dr. Uchechuku Samson Oga, O-O-N. And um, thank you very much, uh, Minister, uh, for making the time to join us. Okay, today is one of those kind of days. Um, actually, I could hear you, but apparently you can't hear me. Let me try again. Uh, good, good morning, Dr. Oga. Can you hear us? Good nah. morning. Aha. Good morning, Dr. Oga. My name is Yori Folani. I'm in studio alongside uh, Ciro Abaku. And, um, you know... Good morning, Mr. Minister. 
Morning, thank you for having me. But I, can I hear you clearly? Uh, well, that's what we're trying to establish. Um, uh, can you hear my voice right now? Okay, now I can hear you. Very good. Which means you can also hear Cyril. Yeah. Go ahead, Cyril. Good morning, Mr. Minister. Okay, I, I don't know. Maybe it's only my microphone that you can hear. Uh, uh, let me try again. Good morning, Dr. Uh, Dr. Oga. Hello, morning. Okay. I think we'll stay with my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, we were hoping to um, sort of be brought up to speed by you on efforts in, in as it were, optimizing uh, the tapping of, uh, you know, potential from our mineral resources. Uh, until now, I imagine that um, there have been all sorts of informal mining activities that were not sort of captured in the net of the totality of our um, uh, assets. Uh, could, could you speak briefly on that, please? Please, can you come back with your question? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Min Minister, we wanted to find out what the new efforts are towards optimizing our tapping of our minerals. All right. Um, b because, um, well, I think maybe... I think there's a problem here, and then... And it's so funny that we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, let, let, let me try a shorter question. What is the situation uh, with our mineral resources vis-a-vis uh, -vis trying to get optimum returns from them? Okay, uh, so clearly we're having a difficulty. It will be resolved, I'm sure. Um, but for the moment, um, you were talking uh, about um, the whole sort of scattered uh, yeah. uh, aspect to um, people that have been traditional miners, uh, people who have been doing it from time Imo River, as we say locally, <laughs> and did not yeah, know. Okay, okay, please don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if they are called illegal miners, you may I could have laughed at them. <laughs> but, but you see, yeah. these people have to understand that it's not, it's not business as usual. As They've as been to... doing it from generations and um, just tapping our resources and shortchanging everybody. As of 2015, a House of Reps uh, report actually said that Nigeria had lost about 8 trillion naira, not mm -hmm. billion, trillion. And that's, something, uh, that's, that's even apart from what you could have got, for, got, got from oil. Ill illegal gold miners, you have them in Zamfara. Mm -hmm. In fact, when Governor Matawale, had some years, I think last year, uh, yeah, last year, struck a peace deal with the bandits, they fled to Oshun. I remember when the Oshun state governor also ran to Abuja to meet the chief of Amistad to say, please, oh, send some more troops to Elisha. We had these people. So Nigeria has abundant gold reserves. But artisanal gold mining, people who just take this and, use, right. and you know, illegally export them, have been draining the country of, of critical resources. So this, this, this effort to get artisanal miners, they are not even really professional, but like, you know, artisanal miners to be able to now begin to bring whatever they are mining into a central net. The CBN will do the buying yeah, exactly. of, of, the, of, the, of the gold bars. We saw on TV the other day when, um, you know, they presented the president with what he, the, yeah, he, I saw yes, the gold first gold bars. All done up properly, stamped, and the, actually were... The, the, in the, the chambers, yes. The, yeah, the kind of bars that you see when, when gold is going to be symbolized anywhere in the world. Of course. We're going to be producing that. But let me see if we can reach the minister. They've been working on it. Um, good morning, minister. Dr. Um, uh, Oga. Good morning, Dr. Oga. Morning. morning. Ah. Thank you for having me here. Uh, great, indeed. Great. I'm in studio alongside Cyril Agbaku. Uh, so. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Yes. So the presidential um, program, you know, in mopping up a designer man in Nigeria is on our radar today. Can you tell us about what government is, is, is really trying to achieve? Thank you. You know, with the coming of this government, the president talked about diversification of the economy, creation of wealth, empowerment of the people, and generation of revenue. Now, when you talk about Nigerian mining culture, it's more of 
artisanal mining, especially when it comes to metallic mineral like gold. So what the federal government is doing is that how to mainstream these artisanal miners into mainstream mining, formalize them, bring them into cooperatives, and make them to be responsible miners so that they can mine using responsible means to avoid hazardous mining uh, culture within the mining fields. So what the ministry is currently doing is that we are harnessing the potentials that we have in this artisanal miner because artisanal miners are looked at people that are, you know, for their daily bread, maybe people that um, go behind their backyard, pick minerals, sell them and put food on their table. But we're trying to create wealth for them. When you have these, we want the central bank to be an off taker for these gold miners. Harness, collate their what they have mined, put them together, and then create a bar which the Central Bank of Nigeria will be the ultimate buyer for the creation of our reserve. That is what we are doing. We are, what, 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 uh, uh, you see, with what we Minister, have, Minister, what, I, what, what, I, are you hearing me? Yes, we are, Minister. What would you um, assess the progress... Um, uh, report on, on, on this endeavor to be at this point in time. What, what percentage has been great, achieved? It's a great milestone because, like I said, within this period, you can see the first time in the history of this country we've been able to give an artisanally mined gold bar to Mr. President. It has never happened before in the history of Nigeria. So today we have the miners being aggregated formed into cooperatives. Now today, you can see there's a lot of wealth creation. They can have value for their money, mm. for what their effort. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing them together, formalizing them in various uh, strata for them to come together as a cooperative. One, they will have opportunity to have access to funding. They have access to opportunity to have access to equipment. They have opportunity to have access to the assistance from the federal government. Mm. So this is, by doing this, we're empowering them. What, what is the and quantum, oh, sorry minister, to, what is the quantum of gold that um, is available to Nigeria? Uh, people think of Ghana as a country where there is abundant gold, South Africa. Uh, how, how, how well uh, are we doing in relation to countries like this? You see, the issue is that when you talk about this, because we've not had real big miners in Nigeria. The first big mining is the first one that is coming up in Sejilola, which is the Sejilola project in Oshun State. But Nigeria is characterized by artisanal mining. And what we are currently doing is how we are working on bringing the big miners into the Nigeria, because Nigeria has more resources in terms of gold than even South Africa and other, many other countries. Our gold reserve has not been touched. And I can tell you with the result that is coming from the Nigeria Integrated Mine, uh, Mineral Exploration Project, that is, which is called the NIME project that we are doing currently, there's a lot of result coming to show that Nigeria has great potentials. States like, and it's, you know, it is, it is it's, it's, a, it's running within Zanfara, Kanu, Ka, Ka, Kasina, Kebi, Kaduna, Niger, Kwara, Oyo, all these states, even including Nasarawa and Kogi State, they all have gold. So the gold reserve for Nigeria is so enormous that it has not been tapped. We are just waiting to bring foreign investors who are really going to go into big mining. And this will help to create employment for most of our team in Nigerian youth. But like I said, most of our gold mining have been based on this artisanal mining. People that are doing just go behind the yeah, and yeah, you know yeah, gather yeah. gold here and there and then pick them together and then sell them to some uh, what's the time uh, frame minister? People. What's the time frame minister for bringing in these uh, 
professional and bigger miners that you're talking about. What's the time frame for that? Because you said we are waiting like to... I, like I said, we didn't... You can see what is going on currently in the Sejulada project. Once there's a success, a lot of other miners will come in. And when they come in, that will help a lot. There's a lot, of, a lot that is going on in other uh, uh, interest parties, a lot of uh, big investors that have been making inquiries on how to come in. And then I can tell you because of this uh, COVID, some of them are laid back. But I can assure you that if not for the COVID, a lot of miners have been making a lot of inquiries on how to come into because we were able to show based on the outings that the minister has gone to Canada and South Africa, a lot of uh, investors have been questioned on how they can come into Nigeria and we've been trying to open up a lot of avenues for them to see that the potentials here are so much. A lot of information is coming up and we are getting a lot of um, due to the exploration we are doing before now, they said because of lack of data, they cannot come into Nigeria, but a lot of data is coming and we are, those data have been exposed to these investors and it's quite interesting the information we are getting from these big miners. Okay. Time frame is a function of the investor. It's not a function of the ministry. In terms of the ministry, everything that is needed to be put in place, all the structural and framework have been put in place to attract all the necessary investors into Nigeria. Okay, okay. Uh, mi Minister, sir, I understand that at least in about a dozen or more states, we have active artisanal gold mining going on. And this has lingered, you know, for quite a long time. The president himself said that between 2012 and 1920, um, is it 2012 and 2018 or so, 17, 18 or so, Nigeria lost about two billion or three billion dollars to artisanal gold miners, illegal gold mining, really. But I'm a bit concerned that only two local refineries have been given license for gold mining. Couldn't we have done more, given the number of states we have uh, mining um, um, gold reserves in, and you know the fact that we do have a thriving uh, um, industry, even if it's not a formal industry. Thank you. Well, this is a function of an investor. It's not a function of the ministry. We have been, you know getting investors to know that, look, the opportunities are there for investors to come in. We are out there to license as many investors willing to come in for processing of gold as possible. Even though I've encouraged even states to get involved in these processes. So a lot is being done internally within the ministry and the ministry has done a lot to encourage both the state government, the private sector, for people to get in, involved in investment in the mining sector. So I can assure you that in the next one year, you'll see a whole lot of it because within this short period, even most state governments, uh, governors are getting interested as regards to uh, development in mineral sector. So we are encouraging a lot of state government to be involved. We are encouraging investors, private sector to be involved. Today, yes, like you said, we have licensed two gold mining uh, we are giving two gold mining licenses to two uh, investors. And a, a lot of other investors are processing, have already applied for licensing. And I can assure you in the next one year, you will have as many uh, gold processing mining licenses as possible. This is not something that is easy because for you to have a gold mining license, there is a lot that is required. Security is required. You, you, you need to get a bullion to be involved for you to have a license. So, the, there are processes that are involved, and I can assure you that other investors are coming up are in the mainstream, and the next few uh, months, you will see other investors being licensed for good uh, mining, uh, good refining. Okay. Uh, Dr. Oga, um, yeah, we're talking about gold now, um, but gold isn't the only uh, precious uh, metal that we have. Uh, there are also minerals. Um, because people yes. have been saying that we are quite rich, maybe bauxite, maybe yes. topaz, whatever. Could, could you just give us a brief um, you know, outline of the potential of Nigeria uh, with minerals apart from gold? Thank you very much. Like I always tell people, Nigeria is rich. Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria, you see, if you look at the River Niger and River Benue, you know, cutting across the Nigerian map, 
It shows that it's a washing, bringing all the minerals. Nigeria has over 50-something minerals, both industrial minerals, metallic minerals. Any mineral you can talk of is in Nigeria. We have lithium, we have manganese, we have, li we have uh, tantalite, we have lead, we have zinc. You can talk as many as you can. Nigeria is so blessed. What we are doing now is we are sitting down to actualize bringing investors for them before now what people are doing is taking licenses and keeping them and then becoming like middlemen but today we are saying we want investors people that are ready to develop this because today if you look at it for instance there are minerals that have been imported but they are here in nigeria so we are looking for investors. I, I see emerald. I, I see ready. I see emerald uh, artifacts uh, are around, Minister. Do we have emeralds, for instance? Maybe it's a semi-precious. We have, a, like I said, there is no mineral that is not in Nigeria. There is no mineral. There is no Nigeria is over blessed. When you talk about blessing, Nigeria is blessed with minerals. It's about being so able to exploit it. Is, it's, it's about, it's, it's about and, and the federal government has done a lot in terms of creating institutions, institutions for the development of exploration of these minerals. Like we have the Nigerian uh, uh, Mining, uh, 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 Nigerian Institute of Mining uh, and Geology and Geoscience in Jos. This school is developed, is uh, instituted for the purpose of development of minerals in Nigeria. So we have, government has done a lot. It's for the private sector to come and leverage on what government has done for them to invest in this sector do, so do, that this, do, do, this, this minister, sector can create mi, a lot of employment for Nigerian Timmy youths. Minister, when you, now that you're speaking about the uh, training institute, it, it sort of brings the question to my mind about do we have a sizable body of um, uh, mining, prospecting uh, professionals in, in the country that are Nigerian? Yes, of course, we do. We do. We have, we have, we have so many geologists. We have a, and they have a body. Okay. They have a body that, is, that is, 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 is bringing all the mining engineers together. So they, they, they are quite large number of mining engineers in Nigeria. And like I said, one of the key things, and that is what the government has done, because some of the issues is that, you know, mining has a longer gestation. You need to go and do, first of all, you do exploration. By the time you finish your exploration, before you go to exploitation. And because of that, because it is a long gestation, most times people do not want to invest in this area. Mm. But we are encouraging people to see that is the future of any country. Are you mining, sure, Minister? Are, are you mean, sure, as you stated, Minister, that you, you've gotten on top of the problem of people, because of their connections, getting mining licenses and then sitting on it, uh, hoping to just profit from really just being a middleman? Like I said, we have gotten beyond that because that's what we're saying, because we have this rule. There is a rule that use it or lose it. And you can see within the last few months, we have canceled so many licenses okay. and we are canceling every six months. Okay. When you don't get into exploration, you, we cancel your lease. It's, you have a use it or lose it uh, rule in the mining sector. So because of that, we are reviewing all the mining certif uh, uh, certificates we have, all the exploration certificates we have. Every six months, there's a relationship, there's a synergy between the uh, mining cadastra and the mining inspectorate. So where you are unable to utilize your license, this license is, subjected to, is subject to cancellation within six months, okay. if not used. So that is what we are doing since we came in. We've been reviewing that. We've do, done that in the last few months, and we're doing a, another one in the next few months. Okay, so uh, Minister, sir, you talked about, the, I, I, I have just two questions. You, talk, you, you talked first about getting states to be involved. But we know that oftentimes many states will point to the mineral and mining law, I think of 1999, that says that all the powers to mine and to explore will be, will, will be vested strictly with the federal government. So I don't know if you're looking to share some of your powers with the states. That's one. The other one is, you talk about the minister, you know, going, and, um, going around and trying to see if you could get foreign investors. 
will they be given some sort of in incentives? I do know that as at, as at when we were to bring in these uh, telecoms operators, I think there was about a five-year tax rebate. What exactly are you putting on the table to, in to incentivize for an investment in this area? Thank you. As you are aware, the Mineral and Mining Act of 2007 has vested the power on the minerals on the federal government. However, the law, the land law use act vested the ownership of the land on the governors. Now, where we came in, we have been moving around, creating, seeking for synergy between the state government and the federal government. And that is why the federal government has brought in the issue of 13% derivation to be given to states that where these minerals are being exploited from. So the states have a lot to gain. One, as a state, you have 13% derivation from whatever mineral that comes that is being exploited from your state. Two, the states can come into mining not as a government, not as a state, but using SPV to come into, they can acquire licenses, they can mine. What is and SPV? Then pay the right royalty to what is SPV? Now, what special is purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicle. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Special yes, purpose yes, vehicle. Yes. They can, yes, they can come up with special purpose vehicles that can help them to come into mining and then they can have licenses. They can equally have partnership with other investors and with that they can leverage on that and come into mining. This will ensure that those SPVs pay their royalties as they are mining. So it's not where the state is taking, oh, they, they are, the state is the one investing. No. With that, there is, 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 is an entity, and that entity has a relationship with the Ministry of Mining. And with that relationship, the entity has a right to enter into obligations and transactions with the Ministry. And that will encourage most of the states to invest in the mining sector. So we are saying that, one, the 13% derivation goes to the state. We are saying that, apart from that, the state is free to invest in mining using special purpose vehicles for the interest of uh, uh, accountability. Now, when you talk about investors, one, today in Nigeria, for you to bring in mining equipment, we have waivers you have waivers to bring in your mining equipment and there are tax reliefs available for, for miners in terms of big miners that are coming for investment. So there's a lot, just like what you said in telecom. In fact, there are, we have much more in the mining sector. So for us, we are open. And then we've been able to put a lot of, strengthen the legal framework, strengthen the, uh, 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 the, 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 the framework in the system so that every miner that is coming is sure of his investment. A lot has been said and there's an openness in what is happening in the ministry. So for us, this is the time for everybody to encourage miners because this is one sector that can employ as many Nigerians as possible for today. Since the president is working towards taking millions of Nigerians out of poverty by way of employment and bear of creation of wealth creation. Okay, well, uh, Minister, I don't know how, uh, because you, you gave us a, a wide swathe of states where there is potential, because I was going to ask the, maybe to you, troubling question of where, which states indicate uh, uh, the highest potential uh, for mining of precious minerals in Nigeria. When you talk about, because these things, uh, these things are things that are underground. Yeah. You, you know, but you instance, guys do studies, so you know. Some, no, 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 no. It's, it's, not about, it's not about doing studies. It's sometimes these things, uh, uh, it, take for instance, somebody that went to, uh, he, he saw a field, he had a, a, a potential in that field is that maybe about 2,000 ounces and maybe 
by the time it goes into the, they find out that within the confines of that cadastra, the vein is so wide that it has so much in that uh, acreage. So you cannot stay on top and be saying what is under, okay. that is, this is what is under. But I can tell you that most of the states talk about Zamfara, you talk about uh, uh, Kaduna, you talk about Osho, you talk about Niger, you talk about, you see, like I said, they are so, Indeed. most of these states are all in doubt. Okay. They are all in doubt. They're deep, in, in fact, Nasarawa state is solid mineral state. So there are a lot, you have zinc, lead, tantalite, everything is abound there. But one thing I keep, I always tell one thing I keep telling people is that, look, why we need to develop the mineral sector now is that the fourth industrial revolution is all about minerals. All right, then. Thank you very much, Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we appreciate you making time for us. We've been speaking with the Honorable uh, Minister of State for Mine and Steel Development and is also the chairman of the Ministerial Committee on the Optimization of Revenue from Mineral Resources. Once more, Dr. Oga, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, so that's our program today, yeah. really. We don't have a time for any more. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, at least we now know the potential, yes. and we'll be checking out the ministry from time to yes, time we to should. see how, we're, we really how we're going. So that's our program. Um, please join us on Monday for a fresh edition, and as we always say, do your best to stay safe, I, I, I've, been, I've, I've just been told that I jumped a day, you know, that um, <laughs> did they say tomorrow is Friday? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tomorrow is Friday. I guess I jumped a day. So don't worry about Monday. <laughs> Let's worry about <laughs> tomorrow, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Join us then for a fresh edition. Cyril and I say stay safe as always. Bye-bye.